Okay, I think we're I think we're ready to go. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Young, for joining joining me here uh, and uh, giving us a little more information about Master Tsun. Master Tsun. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I can pronounce. I can interview better than I can. Don't worry, I forgive you. You're American. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I, I've only known you for 20 some odd years now. You'd think I'd have learned by now. Now, sure. <laughs> I've been in America for more than 45 years. I still speak uh, English. Think about it. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's well, we'll call it a, we'll call it even then. Okay. <laughs> so um, I guess Let's start with uh, with his history a little bit. Where, um, when was he born? Where, when and where was he born? Um, can you tell us a little bit about his uh, about uh, about where how he lived, um, his personality? Okay. Yeah, the, the usual. The first one we try to see. He was born in 1911. 1911 is uh, November 15th. Okay, and then the, he passed away in 1976. May 5th, oh. yeah, he passed away because of uh, energy dispersion, because he trained too much of yang sai, not too much of yin sai, yang sai. So that time, because trained too much of yang sai, then it's a physically you manifest, the power manifested. So that's why he got an energy dispersion. It's very common, it happened in the Shaolin temple in the past. I don't know if today happening, but in the past, when you train too much of physical, then that's that's about the loose balance. You had to be trained bone marrow washing as well to balance it. But at that time, of course, bone marrow washing they kept a secret. So because the reason he didn't know. So he trained that. So he passed away because of stroke, because inner dispersion. And stroke is one of the common common uh, cons uh, consequence of the the energy dispersion. So he died in 1976, May 5th. Mm. So, yeah, but as I know, because of when I learned from him, he's about 44 at that time. And uh, he he has a daughter already married, and he has two, two sons. Yeah, so they live in the in the mountains, in mountain, because I uh, seen through my hometown. I believe he was born in Shinzu because uh, he never left his home too, too far away from his home. Okay, so in, the, in Shinzu, in my hometown, there are 18 peak of the mountains surrounding the city. And uh, so surrounding the city, you know, like a semi-circle. So that's where the wind come in from the ocean, then the continuous circle around. So that's why my hometown is very well known called Wind City, Fengcheng, mm -hmm. Wind City. Because uh, there's uh, a lot of wind and a lot of sand because uh, there's the wind city. That's where how, how I grew up. Okay, so I believe he was born there because we never asked for detail. But as when I know him at that time, he, he was a farmer. He had a wife and two kids with him. He, his daughter already got married. So when you see the picture behind me, that's a picture. That's the only picture, <laughs> only photo available when he passed away. But this was about 40, 40 years old around that time when his daughter got married. When his daughter got married, that's the first time he took a picture for that. So huh. that's the only picture. So they cannot find any other picture when he passed are there, away. Are there one or two photos from, from when you were training available? Yeah, yeah, those photos, yes. I'm talking about the serial picture, like a portrait. Yeah, you see, he even wear a tie. That's that's not him. So don't when you look at that, you can be fooled. So oh, you wear a tie, his mother, because that was a wedding for his his daughter. <laughs> and his two young young boys are much 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 younger than the daughter. So when he when his daughter married, he still lived together with uh, Master Jin Jin Sao Feng, his master, uh, his his wife and the kids. So only after his master passed away, then then they separate. Okay, so he's a he's a very simple farmer, because uh, again he couldn't read, he couldn't write, he was not educated. He was not educated. But question to me, the, the he understand the philosophy of a life is a deeper than most of the people I ever seen. Mm. Yeah, because uh, from the training martial arts, he got a lot of experience about life and understand about the life. For example, you know, he say. Hey, when you learn, he called me Little Young because I was small. I call Little Young. He said, "You know, you you're learning martial art with me. It's not learning martial art. 
you're learning the way of life. So that was a, that was a profound because uh, at that time I didn't know, but it was actually it's true from learning martial arts. That's why I learned to be disciplined, to have a discipline and to be patient and to, to a lot of things. It's, it's, a, it's all affect my whole life. Yeah, since I, I was 15 years old. See, that, that's all he's very simple farmers and uh, very simple. Yeah. Did, did he talk a lot about those, those ideas about what it meant to train martial arts or, or did that just come through in, in your no, interactions? No, be, yeah, it's because usually we don't really say choose a subject and talk about it. Mm. Yeah, usually, you know, it's, it's like a regular conversation. We sit together, we talk, we chat, and you tell a story, this and that, and some philosophy, this and that. That's it. Unless we ask questions. Yeah, the one that asks most of the question, probably me. Because uh, every day after I get, I get out of school, about 3.20 in the afternoon. So because uh, from my high school to where he lived, that's another peak of the mountains. So I have to cross another mountain, go there. So, so when I go there in the afternoon, because I like to hang around with uh, where he lived. Yeah, because uh, it's not the scenery, it's beautiful. At the same time, I feel so close to him. So that's why I asked him more private question in a lot of my classmates. Yeah. So, but uh, other than that, he, he couldn't read, he couldn't write. So yeah, for example, he he gave me a, a secret book about cavity praise for a white crane. That book, he couldn't even read it because it come from copy of uh, his masters. So uh, so I, I just copy one and then make another Xerox. At that time I have Xerox. Then they give me the original back and then another additional copy. But again, at that time, considered precious because that's a considered top secret. Yeah. He didn't. He wouldn't teach that to his students. No, 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 no. no. He wouldn't teach it because the cavity place. He knows some cavity control, but he doesn't. He didn't really train to use a cavity strike to make people, for example, pass out numbness. But he can lock you. He yeah. can lock you. He can lock your cavity like a part of a china. Yeah, that's what he can do. It's like a with a cavity press. Type yeah, of like cavity press, and yeah, he can lock you, and then they cannot immobilize you. Yeah, that's what he knows. But he tried to get people passed out, and you know, the, the, a lot of things they come from the legend. You know, but that one I don't know. Mm. I, I, I never seen him do it. But you know, yeah, even though he said he's so powerful, and then it may be young people can believe he's so powerful. Yeah, I was always wondering how can the person so powerful and strength where they come from. Yeah, until later, it's all, uh, and because after I practiced with him for 10 years, then he tell me it's all from the martial grain secretion. And that time I start understand what the martial grain secretion. Yeah, but you know, I already, there's already, I already 25, that's two years, three years before I left Taiwan already. That would, yeah. that's, that's the internal side of, of, of yeah. white crane. Yes. Yeah. Should, should we, should we, classify that or is it even the right thing to call it is the ancestral crane as the yeah. as the name because the uh, white crane there are many styles and uh, many develop okay you trace back the, the history of a white crane actually start from <coughs> 800 AD around that time at that time in the Shaolin temple they have a five animal martial arts five animal martial arts inside white crane is a one of them <laughs> okay, but at that time already existing. But remember, Shaolin Temple is in the Yellow River. Yellow River is the, in the middle of China. On the north is a northern style, south is southern style. That's why Shaolin Temple inside, they have a northern style, they have a southern style. Okay, so white crane at that time is not considered southern white crane. Is that because they can use it for the north and use it for the south. And the white crane, when white crane passed to Tibet, Tibet have a white crane, it's called Northern White Crane, but also they also named uh, Lama. Yes. Uh, I, I, saw, I saw the style in uh, New York City. There's a, one master was teaching a long time ago. So Lama. So there's a Northern White Crane, they use a uh, more kicking than Southern White Crane. And the one I know is the Southern White Crane because from there, after Qing, Qing, Qing Dynasty, then the, a, lot, a lot of Shaolin monks get killed. So that's why they ship to the South. On the ship to the south, a lot of martial arts have to be adapted to the south, the living style, because a lot of time they are on the boat. 
because the sun style a lot about the river. So, so because the reason you had to be able to fit in to fight on the boat. So that's why the style of a white crane continue modified into more southern style is that you can fight on the boat and the stability, the roots become more important and become emphasize a lot of short range. And uh, that's why China get in, that's why the restaurant get more on the southern style. When we go to the northern style, I don't know northern style too much of uh, uh, white coin. But when white coin pass to south, the main focus is the uh, Hujian. So that's why Hujian is uh, really, for the last 300 years, Hujian is a major place. But Hujian is next to Taiwan. It's only after Taiwan trade. After Taiwan trade, there's uh, one side is uh, Taiwan, the other side is uh, Hujian province. Okay, so for Pro Fujian province, beside the Fujian province is Okinawa. Mm -hmm. Okinawa. So that's the reason Okinawa about 300 years ago, 200 years ago, Okinawa actually is a pirate. Pirate. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pirate base. It's like uh, Vikings. So mm -hmm. all the pirates, they are continue constantly attack to the coast of China. So I don't know why, how, because of some Japanese so after they attack the attack the, the, the China, then they pick up the secret from white crane. So that's why it become a Ryuku white crane. The Ryuku white crane is uh, the beginning of karate. So this is uh, a Ryuku white crane when they pass to Japan become today's a white crane uh, karate. Okay, so because the reason I realized that's why in Japanese they know when they trace back to the karate actually it's from Chinese white crane. So from the white crane training, you can see a lot of structure is really, very really similar to the Japanese uh, karate. For example, the Sanjian. Mm -hmm. Sanjian, Sanjian is a Hukanese, also Taiwanese. Okay, Sanjian, that means three battles. Three battles is the first Qigong, Ha Qigong sequence. It's Ha Qigong sequence. That's one for any beginners beginning, you train Ha Qigong because you train hard and slowly go to the soft. Okay, so the Sanjian in white Korean, actually in the shouting Korean, is really the number one sequence for any students they started to train the hard Qigong. But when they pass to Japan, it becomes the highest level of a Qigong training. That's a, in the, you go to karate, Sanjian is really, they didn't change the name, this is still called Sanjian. Okay, they didn't change the name. So, so when they pass Japan now, because Sanjian become the highest level black belt training for the Qigong. So from there, I can see at that time when Japanese, they learned from white crane, they didn't pick up a lot of the essence yet. But from there, they continue to develop. They continue to develop. And slowly, they de derive and the, to their own style and become today's karate. Okay, so that's what I know. Okay, but when Hujian in, the, in Hujian province at that time exists in four, four style, the most popular, most uh, fundamental one is insist crane. And since the crane because called Zhonghe Quan. Zhonghe Quan, the Hukan is called Zhunhe. So Zhunhe, so that's a, the original crane. The original crane because that's why we, when we talk about with my classmate, we always talk about Zhunhe. So that's the original since the crane. From this crane, they divide it into feeding crane, sleeping crane, and shouting crane, all, all these uh, different cranes. And uh, yeah. so become the four styles. Okay, so this is a style because it's next to Taiwan. So some of the white crane passed to Taiwan. Okay, and the master, my master, he learned from Master Jin, Jin Saofeng. Yeah, but from Jin Saofeng, he, he learned from, from him. That's a Jin Saofeng, his expertise is in sister crane. That's all I know. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so it, so it developed from the Shaolin Temple, worked its way south into, yeah. into Hujian, and then and spread through through to, to Taiwan, Okinawa, yeah. and... Yeah, that, that, that's how you can see the Japanese, they have a side. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, the uh, white crane, they have a side. And Chinese, the two short right Japanese, it's the same thing because they're still the same come from origin. Sure. Wow, fascinating. That's great. Um, so now when you trained with, 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 with Master Chen, he... Um, it was just in a, he just had a small, his small farm up in the hills. You guys, you and your, and your classmates would, would go to him and, and yeah. how, would he, how, he would just start teaching when you arrived or? Yeah, no, no, because, uh, because, 
remember in my generation before me, he has one, one generation before me. And mm -hmm. that generation, I don't even know how many students he taught. But uh, you know, he taught this generation this is three years. Usually it's three years in foundation and still they, they separate, they go home. But uh, at that time, we still have uh, one or two of the older generation, they come to join us for practice at that time. But in my generation, at the time, actually we have a big group because uh, he's, uh, the first generation has some not too many people. Then uh, my generation, we have uh, 19 people. 19, yep. 19, yeah. So we have uh, 19 people. Actually, I was, uh, I was the last one, number 19. <laughs> Lucky so, number 19. Oh, sure. <laughs> said, in Taiwan, that's considered not good about nine, because nine, in nine is mean, mean the bad luck. <laughs> so, but anyway, anyway, that's, uh, that's how, how I train with him. But, you know, but the train here, because uh, you see, in, the, in my 19 classmates inside, I'm, I was the only one go to the college and uh, come to the United States. Okay, but most of them, except the other two, the other two, they go to a senior high school and all others is primary school. After they finish the primary school, that's it. Yeah, so they are coolie. So they are not really educated. They know how to read, how to write, that's it. They don't have a higher education. But the question, because coolie, they have a different time working. So everybody go there with different times. So if whoever can go there earlier, they go arrive earlier and start stretching, start warm up, start doing your stuff and you know, practice what you learn. And uh, when people gather together, so usually about seven, 7.30, then the people get almost there. Then the, my master after finish dinner, we come out and uh, take a look at and then he will sit there watching the train. Okay, at that time we didn't pay money and the people there, is, uh, they go in and practice after they, we practice, we go together, we come down from the mountains. And he would he would just work with each student uh, to their needs. It's not like today in a in a in a school like this where you have a structure no, no, curriculum no, no. or anything like that. No, the, most of the time he was watching. He's yeah. actually he's a student teaches students. Hmm. <laughs> the student teaches and the senior student teaches young students because at that time the system is that you to the senior student you obey. Period. Yeah, because they are older classmates, you just obey like your older brother. You obey. So that's a, that's a reason. So that's why, because they also, they teach you. When they teach you, you appreciate what they teach you. Yeah, so whoever come to pay attention to you, they teach you, even they give you trouble, you appreciate it because they give you trouble, so you learn. So it's not like today. Very different today. <laughs> today, you cannot give students trouble, and then I sue you. <laughs> <laughs> are, are any of your, of your your old classmates still still practicing or still teaching or training? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, actually, a few years ago, I took a group of students, you know, for Master Lee. Yeah, my wife, long feast master, ninety years old birthday. That was about five years ago. I took a group of students to Taiwan. Okay, at that time, you know, the, the my older classmates they come to to see see the students. Yeah, Johnson and Michelle was there, so they know. Yeah, at that time we would have a tour in Taiwan. Yeah, so so that that was a very very happy, happy joyful time, and I took them to, to the old place, to we used to practice and uh, where I used to to run to the mountain because at that time yeah, there's no there's no road like today you have the road the car can go up there it's only a mountain passage, so we had to run there. <laughs> Has it has it been developed now that area? Oh there yeah, yeah. Nowadays, there's a lot of houses there now. So the whole whole area is uh, is not the same as before. Before it's a very nature a mountain. You have a stream, whatever. Even the temple, because be above my master's home, there is a temple. That temple before is a real monk. The real monk, and then that's why they chanting, they meditate. But today, when I go back, it's not a monk, real monk. It's a business now because it becomes a tourist place and people hire a taxi, go there. And uh, I see the monk, they watch TV and they're just like a regular people. So it's uh, already lost the same feeling. Yeah. Was, was much of our, was, was much of which you, you, you said, uh, you, you said there was the, the, the text for the, uh, for the, for the cavity press. Was there, was there much written down about? No, about, no, no. It was all, for the question, the first one, First, he he couldn't read, right? Okay, he wasn't right because since he was fifteen years old, he did with his masters. 
Okay, but he's, I don't think his master would teach them literature as well. So because that time, you know, the, because you say, think about for his generation, probably 90% to 95% of the people, general people, not educated. They mm -hmm. couldn't read, couldn't write. Like uh, my grandma couldn't read, couldn't write. Okay, so because reason that that time, education is not like a, as popular as today. Yeah, today is very different. Okay, so because the, the reason that's why I don't think how serious even he got the document and how serious the document was existing. So today I can dig out some document, the, the martial arts document, the one that can dig most of the documents is a Taiji Chen. Yes. Because Taiji Chen, yeah, Taiji Chen has been written down by Taiji Chen a lot of time passed down by educated people. Yeah. So that's why the Taiji Chen you know, is in a layman society. In a layman society, usually they have a more, because after from Wudan Mountain, they pass on layman society and the Taiji Chen become popular. And that's why there's more elegant people, more educated people, and that's why they write down what they know. Okay, but White Crane is always hidden in the mountains or it's not really the big, big things there. So, because reason, they really, there's no uh, White Crane information. I, when I wrote the, the, the Thai, uh, White Crane book at that time, I searched for information. I couldn't find too much information at all. All I can collect it is all in the book already. That, yep. that time. Yeah, so so that's not like a Taiji Chen. Tai Chen theory, everything is a, a, a very deep. Yeah, so very deep. So that's a question now. It will help me a lot because today from the, you know, the white crane is called soft heart style. The soft style white crane is the same as the Taiji Chen. The theory, listening, following, sticking, attachment, all these things. All these keywords in white crane do the same thing. Okay, the soft side. But the hard side, white crane is like a long fist. They use a physical body to, you know, to fight. So because the reason the white crane is soft hostile, style. So because the foundation, I was able to understand Tai Chi theory. But eventually the Tai Chi theory helped me understand the white crane because white crane didn't have too much theory behind it. But from the Tai Chi Chen theory, I was able, because I have the experience from training, but I was able to use that theory to apply into, into white crane. So that's what helped me, yeah, help me understand white crane a lot. So, so, so in principle, the, the, the internal, the soft side of white crane should be very similar or, or would, be, would be the same theory yeah. as the Tai Chi. Yeah, very similar than Tai Chi. It's a very similar. But the question is how in Tai Chi, I try to find because uh, in the white crane, we learned the martial grain circulation, especially the last few years before I came to the United States. Okay. But I tried to search for the Tai Chi Chen if they have the theory in the Tai Chi Chen. I only find one document they mentioned about it. Only if, if, if a sentence they mentioned about it. That's it. And yeah. then everything. That's why I start wake up and say, oh, that's a, that why my white Korean teacher didn't teach us until he trusts us after 10 years. The, the grand circulation. Yeah, yeah the grand, martial grand circulation. The same thing, I believe Tai Chi Chen also, because Tai Chi Chen, a lot of legends, the, a lot of masters, they have such a strong power. Where does power come from? It got to be martial grand circulation. So, but I, I found out that if any written document is not existing, only one, one sentence in one of the documents. Oh. And, the, and the, I realized that there's a called oral secret, because in Chinese, they pass a secret down to students, have a written secret and oral secret. Oral secret, usually the master, they keep it until one day they trust the student, then they tell them. Yeah, because you look at the martial grand circulation, it's not a big deal. If once you know it, it's not a big deal. It's very simple things, but questions, it make a big difference of a power manifestation. Hmm. Yeah. It, okay, that's fascinating. So did, did was, was, the, was the Qigong, the, was the, the internal component emphasized much? Well, at, at first, was, or not, or was it hard, hard style, hard qigong first, and then when the when when the students were trusted, they would be taught the the internal. No, because in, in the, my my white crane, the from the sister crane from the master Zen is different. Because I try to search for other shouting crane, feeding crane, you know, sleeping crane, all those things about what they train. But I thought a lot of things they train, and since the crane don't train, that means they already been developed in their their, their style. Like a Sanjin. Sanjin not exists in the ancestor crane. But in the ancestor crane from Mazun, he have a similar sequence, but it's not Sanjin. Yeah. Like a Qi Xing, you understand Qi Xing, the first sequence. That's considered like a hard Qigong. Yeah. yeah. 
and also he have a he have a a son her son her is a called Feng Quan. Actually, it's the soft qigong. So because uh, because they, they have a different approach. But the uh, Sanjian when they started, I don't know. In the phone, but it is the existing Shaolin Quan and the uh, and the sleeping Quan. Okay, <laughs> like for example, the when white Quan passed to Taiwan, the Taiwan have a two major style of a white Quan. One is the insister Quan. That's a that's where in my hometown Xinzhu. The other one on the south of Taiwan in the Chikan Xiluo in the, the area of southern Taiwan. That's a huge, that white crane is a feeding crane called mm -hmm. Shihe Quan. So that one is huge, but that one, is a, you go there, it's an entire village, they learn the white crane. So those are the white crane is now, is more spread into United States now. So sure. yeah, so that's a called feeding crane. So some of the white crane uh, master, they are in the United States, they come to see me, they, they, they realize they are from southern China, uh, southern Taiwan. Yeah. So it's it strikes it strikes me that that the ancestral crane, what 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 you've what you've studied for so long, it, it is is fairly unique. Are there are there other Chinese yeah, because, styles? Yeah, no, uh, no, because they are. They, you look at the feeding crane. A yeah. lot of times they they do the forms, okay, and uh, they get a lot of gene training. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's not because uh, you should remember when I trained my master with my master Jin, it's not that that's what you see. Because uh, for me, I, after I learned Tai Chi, I continue to modify, continue to edit, continue to modify. It. So now this uh, white crane is more complete system. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I'm, the, do the, I'm doing all these things to make it more system so I can preserve the art. So, you know, if anything void inside. Missing inside, I will use the Tai Chi Chen theory to oh. compensate what I'm missing there. And the, from white crane the experience, I use the experience to apply into Tai Chi Chen what I missed in the white crane. So from the white crane experience and the Tai Chi Chen theory, that's why I can modify both white crane and the Tai Chi. So now you can see the white crane inside we train a little bit similar to Tai Chi. And Tai Chi train, I trained today with students is more similar than white crane. <laughs> okay so that that's 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 really that's really cool so yeah so you you kind of filled the the when you practiced if, if if i can if i'm summarizing this correctly but when you practiced white crane the there were the internal components but the the theory wasn't explicitly stated no so so you've you 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 know but but the but the the, yeah. the theory the, fills those gaps yeah. at, at that time most masters they tell you how to do it huh. but they don't know why See, I am the one trying to interpret why, yeah, you know, how I can do it, and why not that simple because you have to understand what the body is in the system. You have to know how to lead the chi. You have to know everything detail. But that time it's not like that. It's not like today. I have the access to all the knowledge. Yeah, yeah but that's why make me it's so unique today because I was able to interpret a lot of ancient practice with the modern science. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 through the Taiji theory too. And Master Zin, yeah. Master Zin was the one who suggested you study Taiji, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because at that time you should understand at that time the background, because at that time all the masters are still very conservative. Yeah, but you understand if you if you try to learn from train with another master, it's absolutely not because that's not because when you learn from another master, you reveal the secret of the one master to another master. By that time, you see the martial arts secret is a, like a today's the nuclear bomb formulas. <laughs> you can <laughs> reveal to the enemy because once the enemy know your, your technique, you got big trouble. So because the reason that's why the, all the masters, they're forbidding students to learn another master. It's not only talk about royalties, but talk about the secret of the style. Okay, by that time, my master was uh, more open-minded than everybody. That's why the reason, and, and that's why I say amazing part, he's a farmer, but at the same time, he's open-minded because uh, he will encourage us to develop new things instead of keep the conservative and the idea. Okay, that's why I learned from him a lot, to keep my mind open. So that's why today I can share the knowledge with the people because he said, no, the more you open, the more you teach, the more you learn. That's what he said. You've okay. always you've always encouraged so you've always encouraged us to to question everything. Yeah, that, that, that's the reason that, that, that's from him, uh, not not from Master Lee or Master Gao. 
Mazali and Mascal is very strict. They are military men. Okay, but Mazali is different. He's a he's a farmer, and at the same time, you know, he, he believed the art should be continually developed instead of just keep the same and uh, so square. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so what, what, what I try to say is that. Uh, was <laughs> was a question. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. I was asking about uh, about whether he had. Um, oh, that I was. I was commenting that he had recommended you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get back to that part. Okay, <laughs> because when I was nine years old to fifteen years old, I had an also. Yes. And the also is very serious because we have a nine children in my family, and because lack of food and I develop also. The also never disappear. Okay, so one day I was training white crane, then the stomach pain. So I sit in the corner and cold sweat. Then he come, he take my pulse and he say, oh, you have some problem in the stomach area. I say, yes, since I was a small, then I always have, if I eat, I get pain. If I don't eat, I get pain. So that's why, but especially when I train, because white crane use a lot of waste mm -hmm. to jerk the power, to manifest the power. So because of the reason it can cause a cramping of the stomach. So one day I had an episode kick in. So he comes to take a look, he said, mm. I, I, I asked him, how can I do, how can I do? Because at the time we didn't have the money to see the doctor or whatever, and he said, it's also. And then he, he said, mm, I, I, I heard Tai Chi Chen can help you relax the internal organ. That's what he said, <laughs> okay? And uh, he didn't say, he says, that's, that's the only thing he said. That means what? That implies that you should practice Tai Chi Chen. That's why I start searching for a Tai Chi Chen teacher because again, at that time, the teacher to teach student is not easy to be accepted because, because there's no money relation between master and students. The master teach you because simply they want to preserve all they teach you. It's not say, okay, you pay me, I teach you. Yeah, so no, they can't relations. So because reason that's why you, even you try to be accepted, it's not that easy. The teacher not, not accept you easily. So that's why I keep searching, keep searching, and try to find any teacher who want to accept me. Then I find out the high school teacher, Master Gao. He's the teaching five students. So I go there, beg him to take me. See, so that's how I started. Amazing part, I learned the low back movements and the soft movements, and the slowly my front side of stomach start get relaxed. Then six months later, the episode of uh, ulcers, you know, start reduced. It's not, it's not coming every two days or every days. Yeah, it comes once a week and slowly, slowly more and more become once a year. And then, even, then since then I have to watch what I eat. Everything I eat is very sensitive, can cause stomach problem. But, but the, the low back movements and the, and the movements of the waist that you learned in Tai Chi were, were what helped relieve all that all yes. ulcer pain. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly from the low back movements you know actually is a uh, because lower back and the front side balance each other yep so i learned to move the lower back actually the energy from front side shift to the back and shift back make the front side is more relaxing so and of course at that time i didn't know the theory but the from the exercise i can relax my my stomach and much easier so and then after that and the, it's, it's done did the did the white crane training have a similar movement or is it was it more, more kind of a cinema, they don't emphasize it because uh -huh. they emphasize more physical. But the Tai Chi Chen not. Tai Chi Chen is not too much physical. Tai Chi Chen movement is very soft, very gentle, very soft and relaxed. But white crane is not. White crane is more joking to manifest the power. See? Wow, I see. So generally speaking, when you trained white crane, it was more, more jing training, more, more. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because, external. yeah. Yeah, but you you know the from the white crane you can see every sequence is very short. It's not long like a long fist, but it's short. That's because inside they emphasize only about six or seven jing training, but they, they repeat the same jing training, repeat the same jing training. See, that's why they emphasize a lot of them. So you can see white crane is different from long fist. Yeah, yeah, long fist, long fist. You can see every movements have a application, so obvious. But white crane is not. White crane is all the sequence is only a structure. From the structure, then there are many applications can be applied. So it's, it's to me, you know, some like today, like a, like a music, like a music, uh, what the music, jazz, you know jazz? Sure. I don't know, like a jazz, the musician, they are on the stage, they don't know, they don't have a, a music, 
All they do, they, they, when they start praying, they harmonize each other without thinking. See, that's a, that's, a, that's a high art because you have to create right over there. The way can they give you basic structure, basic note, but you have to be able to know how to mix them and to, to apply in the real situation. How so do you that, apply the patterns? Yeah, it's a, that, that's why you get the patterns. So mm. that's why the, every sequence, they emphasize only seven patterns or six, seven patterns. So from there, you keep training, keep training, keep training until the body have the structure and you have the sensitivity of enemy and you have the reflexes. That's, that's a white coin. It's is, not like a long piece. Is that very common in the, in the traditional arts? It, it strikes no. me that I don't see it very often. Yeah, no, no, it's no. very unusual. That's, that's, that's why a white coin is not that popular. Yeah. To tell the truth, because the white coin really have the people who are really, really interested in the art, they understand the art, they will get in because they can enjoy that. Yeah, but there are a lot of people know. Today you can see long fist is more popular than white crane because long fist is more beautiful, you know, like a Beijing Wushu team is all long fist. Mm. Yeah, and the white crane, just not. Even the, in China, when I was in China at that time, we saw a white crane performance from Gujian. Yeah, we already modified. The white crane make it like a Wushu now. So it, it already lost the essence. Is there is there anyone still still training or studying the 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 what you learned Any okay. in Taiwan? Yes, but in China, I don't know. The main yeah. yeah, but you see the karate, the, the copy from Chinese white coin. Karate doesn't have too many technique in each each kata. In each kata, they have only a few techniques, but they keep practice, they keep practice, keep practice. They have the same mentality as white coin. Yeah, but again, the technique is already modified. It's not the same as white crane. Yeah, they are more so harder because white crane called soft hostile than the karate more like hostile now. And, we're, and, and so, so the, the, it's it's very challenging to preserve what yeah. what we know and so yeah. much. So, so that's exactly the white crane. That's why you know the main thing I take a student to the mountain to preserve the art. It's yeah. not just to preserve the Tai Chi chain and the long fist because Tai Chi and long fist already been existing, already so popular already. That one, I don't need to preserve it. It's still there, but the white crane is dying. Sure, let's, let's, it, it, let's revive it. Let's keep it alive. Yeah, they're, they're because they are because deep. So that's why a question that you try to teach people white crane in the city, it's not that easy. So that's the reason I take a student to the mountain to train them. Yeah, it's the main thing is for the white crane. But you know, so far it's pretty good and there are a few good students there. So they can keep the art going if they continue. I mean, if, if, the, art, if the art can continue to develop and grow, what would you, I mean, what would you like, do you have an idea of what you'd like to see or how you'd like it to grow and develop? Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to dominate their thinking because once they understand, I give them, I give them the tools. It's from their thinking, they develop. Okay, because like a Jonathan, okay, like sure. a Nikki, like a Quentin, they got the, the best, they got the foundation. But from now on, they develop. And after 20 years, become three style instead of one style. If I, I tell you what I like to see in the future, still one style, that's not good. No. It'll be what it, what it yeah, becomes. Especially today, now people have a more opportunity to learn for different styles. Mm. then why don't you modify that? Instead of just uh, restricted only the white crane, you can mix them, see? So that'd be good, like a uh, Bafa. Liuho Bafa is a, actually is a mixture of a uh, Tai Chi Chen, Xing Yu Chen, Ba Gua Zhang. Yep. Yeah, that's how they become a uh, Liuho Bafa, yeah. So, so preserve, preserve the essence and let it grow and become what yes, it's okay. become. Ah. Be creative. The R's, the R's mean to be creative. <laughs> Otherwise, the R's is dead art. See, remember, remember I tell you the story, the white queen? That, that's a story, you know, helped me so much. You see, because I saw one moment, two of my classmen, they apply a different way for the application. And I come to ask him, say, which one is right? He said, both are right. I said, how can we both are right? He said, hey, little young, how much is one plus one? I say two. He said, no, it's not two. I thought it was a killing because the one plus one is two, everybody. No, he said, it's not two. I said, how come it's not two? He said, no, your father is one, your mother is one. You marry, you have five kids, you have seven. One plus one is seven. If they, you treat the art dead, it's one plus one is two. 
but it's trying to ask that alive, one plus one can be many. See, that's why I opened my mind. That's, the, that's all this kind of story talking, all this kind of talking, it helped me my whole life. That's why I say, I tell you, he said, yes, you learn martial arts, learning the way of life. That's true. Oh. Well, that's a beautiful sentiment. It really is. <laughs> and I think, I, I think it's a great one to finish off on. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. This sure, no problem. I hope you got an A for this. I, I hope it, and I hope it helps preserve and, and, and grow the art. Okay. Hey, you take care, huh? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. You take care.